A typical electric stovetop has only three parts that commonly fail. If you have an electric range with a coil surface burner that does not work properly, this video will help you troubleshoot the problem. I'll be using a multimeter. If you don't know how to use a multimeter to read resistance, I'll also post a video showing how to use logic and visual inspection to find common problems with electric burner circuits. When I've posted it, I'll put a link in the box below this video so you can find it. A circuit for an electric burner is very simple. It takes two 120 volts of AC power to make the electric burner, also called a surface element, heat up. When you turn the control switch on, three contacts inside of the control switch, which is sometimes also called the infinite switch, close. One contact closes and it sends 120 volts AC to the burner on indicate light to illuminate it. And two other contacts close causing the two legs of 120 volts to go through the control switch to the receptacle block to the electric burner and when you have the two legs of 120 volts on the electric burner it causes it to heat up. We have to have a way to control the heat on the burner and the control switch does this. It's bimetal and mechanical and what it does is it pulses one leg of the switch on and off in cycles. The faster the switch cycles on and off, the higher the heat on the electric burner and conversely, the slower the switch cycles, the lower the heat will be on the electric burner. Here's an 8 inch electric burner and it's plugged into the receptacle block and then these two leads from the receptacle block would be connected to the control switch. To prevent accidental electrocution, disconnect power to the stove while working on it. If you'll recall, when we talked about our typical burner circuit, it's fed by two 120 volts AC legs, L1 and L2, and those would be these two prongs on the plug. Uh, this is the neutral, and some plugs may have a ground. I've set my multimeter to read resistance, and I clipped the multimeter leads onto the L1 and L2 prongs of the plug. So I'm clipped onto L1 and L2, and we're going to turn the control switches on and see if we can read continuity through the entire circuit when the switch is turned on. This stove is not digital. If the stove has a digital display, then you'll have to bypass the circuit boards, go to the control switch, and remove the incoming wiring L1 and L2, then clip one meter lead onto the control switch's terminal, which should probably be marked L2, and the other terminal, which should be marked L1. That way you'll be reading through this part of the circuit and not this part. I'll test the front burner first. With the switch off, my multimeter reads open. When I turn the switch on, I read about 40 ohms, and that's pretty good. Under at home, 100 ohms should be just fine. That means the front burner checks out good. I turn the burner off, 
and we go back to an open circuit. Next, I'll check the rear burner. And I read about 24 ohms. That's pretty good, but I do know that sometimes this burner doesn't work for me. And so I'm going to wiggle it around. And now when you see I wiggle it around in the receptacle, the resistance on my multimeter is moving all around. And that tells me that this receptacle is bad. So I'll turn the burner off. Let's check one more of the burner circuits. Here's the rear one. Uh, I turn the circuit on and you can see we're reading about 40 ohms. And if I give that one the wiggle test, you can see it holds steady. So we know that the connection between the burner and the receptacle is good. Okay, then we'll turn that one off and meter goes back to open. Here's the terminal ends of the 8 inch burner that didn't pass the wiggle test. You can see that they're burnt and misshapen. Here's the terminal ends of a brand new burner. You can see that they're shiny and not blackened or pitted. The most likely reason that the terminal ends on this burner are blackened and pitted is because the receptacle block was loose and the loose connection was causing arcing. So if the terminal ends of the burner look like this, I would replace both the burner and the receptacle block. Shortly I'll be publishing a video on how to replace one of these terminal blocks. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find it. If you think the electric burner may be bad, remove the burner from the circuit. Clip the multimeter leads onto the burner's terminal ends. This 8 inch burner reads about 25 ohms. The schematic for the stove says an 8 inch burner should read 25 ohms and a 6 inch burner should read 43 ohms. If the reading is very high resistance or an open, then the burner is bad and needs to be replaced. The other causes for an open circuit would be broken wiring between the L1 on the power cord and the receptacle block or L2 on the power cord and the receptacle block. The control switch could be broken and perhaps one of the contacts isn't closing. In that case you'd have to access the control switch and meter from the L2 to the H2 terminal, the L1 to the H1 terminal. If the circuit reads closed with the control switch in the open position or if the burner won't turn off then the most likely problem is is that the control switch is mechanically stuck in the closed position and it's continually sending the two legs 120 volts to the electric burner. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find other videos and thanks for watching.